may we find that the um, article 12 carries uh, and is adopted by the town meeting. Board Article 13 relates to the purchase of a command vehicle for the Rollins Fire Department. Will anyone move to open debate on Warren Article 13? Mr. Irving and Mr. Coons. Um, and is there a member of the select board, Ms. Heward, willing to present the board, the article? Thank you, Mr. Warren. <clears throat> so this command vehicle that we are, are recommending, it was recommended by both the board and the budget committee, is sort of like an SUV that's, but, and as you can in the sense that there's a lot of command-related information associated with that. There was a picture out back for you to look at that looked at, at a command vehicle. And I know that the chief is here. I don't want to stand there any time, but if you would like to help him speak a little bit about the command vehicle, I'm sure he would be happy to. And it all comes out of the capital improvement, reserve fund. It's been on the CIP for a number of years. So there's no impact on taxation. This is money that we have already uh, raised and appropriated in another way. We just have to do it again and say that we're going to take it from the city. Chief Rutherford. One of the reasons why uh, we put in the uh, request for this vehicle is one function of the fire department is when we get to uh, an incident, we have to be able to manage the incident. In the fire department as a whole right now, we do not have a vehicle which meets this capacity. The other thing is some of the organizations we belong to, we are required to provide mutual aid to other communities is to be able to respond with a cheap officer. So if we're going to Dover or Burwick or South Burwick or someplace like that, we need to be able to have somebody go and oversee and help aid in their operation and oversee our individuals operating on the scene. We don't have that capability because obviously we don't have a vehicle. So what we do to meet that commitment is we have a vehicle which is our forest unit. And I will either use that or I'll have another member take me to the scene or one of the other chief officers. And there's been numerous times that this vehicle has been out of town serving our mutual aid commitments to another community when we needed it in town. So basically when we leave, we're shorting ourselves uh, from covering and taking care of our own citizens within our own community. So that was another reason why we needed to do it. Thirdly, is that whether it be myself, deputy chief, assistant chief, a lot of times we're required to go to meetings, to training, to the travel. We do all of that with our own vehicles. And my philosophy is that I just don't think that's the correct way to do it. We volunteer so much time, so much effort into what we have to do that to require us to have to go to these meetings and constantly need our own stuff is zero compensation. It's something that this vehicle will help alleviate. We have numerous members of our fire department that go to long and complicated training sessions. They travel and do it up their own time, their own vehicle, their own expense. This vehicle will help alleviate and help them assist in getting their certification and to increase their capability for services in town. So all these factors together, that's why we've asked for the vehicle. Um, and as the select board has said, it's coming out of CIT funding. So any questions that I need to address? Well, if you could stand by towards the front of the room, um, we'll find out if there are questions. Is there a debate or comment on board article 13? Thank you, Chief. Washington Street. Um, I agree with the Chief that the lack of one makes us more vulnerable and makes it more difficult on his crew who then have to use their own vehicles. I wonder how much we would be spending if we were paying his firefighters for using their own vehicles per mile. I wonder how much that would add up to. I am wondering if through the moderator the Chief could answer the longevity of these um, vehicles, what the average longevity is, and I just want to ensure that there is room at the fire station to house the vehicle also. Okay, thank you. Three questions to the moderator uh, for uh, Chief Rutherford on the cost per mile uh, that's being paid, uh, the longevity of the fire space the uh, um, fire department. Uh, yes, we do have a bay at the uh, fire department where this will fit. What happens is we, as we go forward and out of the new uh, replacement engine, we will be losing a truck 
So that takes care of the engine that we have. There is an open gate the fire station has been for years where this vehicle will be housed. Um, longevity of the vehicle, these, these typically last 20 plus years. Uh, for what our usage is going to be, we would fit well within that range. What was the other one about mileage? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, how much, what the cost, uh, let's see, what the mileage reimbursement rate is for uh, members of the fire department. Amen. From what we, know, what we do on mileage reimbursement is a lot of times we, we run off state statutes as far as um, basically it's what they set for wildland and other type of uh, personal use on vehicles. It comes out of the numbers that the state sets, and that usually runs at, at 28 cents a mile. More than that? You want to touch the floor? 50 cents. Okay, so there we go. So uh, those are some of the costs that uh, are incurred by our members at their own expense. I really have to encourage people to think about postponing this for a year um, and encouraging the board instead to be paying the mileage for the next year, at least until we figure out what the cost is going to be for the police department. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Well, Paul Castle heard his dry, and I'm against the uh, proposed vehicle, uh, but uh, you know, but I'm for a uh, you need know, separate budget for the training of, of the fire department. If a, uh, you know, someone needs uh, training for for the fire department, they, they should be uh, compensated for it. If they're using their own personal vehicles for authorized training, which is approved by the town, you know, definitely for uh, re reimbursement of mileage. You know, because you, know, you can have a situation that you have three, four, uh, uh, people attending a uh, fire train, and and this vehicle might might not be, be, be enough. And to me, it's a waste of money to you know to be uh, you know using a vehicle for tra transporting people to train. Okay. Further comment debate on Article 13 or Article 13. <coughs> uh, Tom Coons. Yes, sir. Well, I'm in support of this. Um, as the chief mentioned, this isn't just about training uh, and mileage reimbursement. This is um, about mutual aid. Uh, we're using this vehicle, as you said, I believe, uh, to a command vehicle as well, to some of these things. Yes. Um, so, can you imagine they're taking out a large truck every time they need to do something like that, which I imagine could, could also happen. But I don't, I don't really see the reason why we wouldn't have this vehicle. I'm actually surprised we don't already. Um, but uh, I absolutely support it. I think it's part of, I mean, we, we seem to have a very uh, good plan this year, which was proposed with some of the other warrants, I think, along the same line of public safety. So I think that we're, we're finally taking care of some of these things. So I support this. Further debate on Warren Article 13. So once again, I'll call. Can I ask a couple of questions? Uh, how many? What? Uh, what's the limit of personnel over here? I'm sorry. Personnel. Because how many people does it carry? How many people does? Yeah. Uh, question from the moderator. How many people does the? Program? And it's in an off-road vehicle also. So two questions to the moderator uh, for, for the chief, I guess. Uh, how many people does it carry, and is it an off-road? And is it an off-road vehicle? Thank you. What we've looked at uh, state bids and the type of vehicle which we want. We would want a four-wheel drive vehicle for that purpose. If we need to go off-road, we do have a, a lot of rural areas in our community. If we get wildland uh, incidents, we can get outside and do that. But also the four-wheel drive, just because of the last few weeks with all the snow and whatnot we've had, we need the ability to be able to get to where we have to go. So. If we classify that as an off-road vehicle, yes. Would that be its purpose? No. We're not going to try to take it off-road as much as we can. We're going to keep it out where we can uh, and use it more efficiently. But four-wheel drive is, is uh, one of the things that we are looking for to add to the vehicle. What was the other one? Oh, people will carry. Typically, uh, the, uh, the pictures and stuff that are out there are four or five people. Because also what we will do with this vehicle is we have uh, equipment that's out of town. 
And we have people, I think I stated it before, there's a very limited number of actual residents of the fire department that live in our communities, a total of seven. About the other 15 to 18 people are from outside of this community. So what we do when we get to a fire in another incident is we're going to leave, we're going to leave about three or four or five bodies where we can get there initially to go to visit another community. One of my goals is uh, to keep everybody at a good level of training, give them their experience as we swap people out. We will bring this vehicle over with three or four people in, or I would be there, we'd come back, get some more, and swap them out so that they can have better training and, and just get the experience that they need. We don't have that ability to do that right now. So something that would carry four or five people. For that kind of thing. One other thing, I don't know if I answered, maybe I was confused, is we're talking about mileage and reimbursement, and I know that's, it came up to the number was 52. The members of the fire department, and any of the stuff which they do, when they're using their own vehicle, there is zero compensation for anything that they get. It's all on their own. They're spending their gas, their time, and they're wearing tearing their vehicle. There's nothing that they get reimbursed for. I don't know if I misled that, but I had one of the members come up and ask me about that, that somebody who had asked about that. No, this is zero compensation. That's again what these people do because of the dedication. Thank you, Chief. Further debate or comment on Warrant Article 13? I think we're ready for the vote. Um, a yes vote is uh, to approve the uh, raising and appropriating the sum of $40,000 and withdrawing the <coughs> improvement reserve fund established for that purpose. Um, those in favor of Warrant Article 13, please raise your card. And we're going to try this about colors. Uh, no, please lower your cards. Those opposed to the adoption of Warrant Article 13. And I'm happy to do a count if you'd like. I, okay. Um, I'm able to declare it from the uh, cards that were raised, and I find that Article 13 uh, is adopted and uh, is, is a 